As heaven's portals opened wide, a brand new saint came strolling in. Alive or dead, he always wore his trademark and infectious grin. A star of stage and screen with comic timing seldom seen. It could be verse or heavy, but he paid no fee to have it filmed. A cost no one could levy, so all we have is spoken words. Just audio. Ah, oh, drat. But given what computers are doing, someday they may fix that. At 43, his life was stopped, his spirit then departed. Yeah, no one likes a funeral. Let's get this party started. My name is Victor Buono, and I'm fat. I've always been fat. I was a fat baby, and a fat boy, and now I'm a fat man. <laughs> My acquaintances seldom use the word fat in my presence. They feel that it would be as unkind as using the word drunk in the presence of an alcoholic, and so they use other words. Plump. <laughs> Stout. Chubby. Big bone. <laughs> For a long time, they said it was baby fat and would burn off sometime in adolescence. But along about my 30th birthday, that particular theory bit the dust because it was evident that it had not burned off and was not about to burn off and that any attempt to burn it off would constitute a public fire hazard. <laughs> And I was happy to see that particular adolescence theory die anyway. At the age of 30, there is nothing more unsettling than the thought of a delayed attack of puberty. <laughs> I'm resigned to being fat. And I wish people would stop using euphemisms. Because I'm fat. I'm fat. That's all there is to that. You might think it etiquette to say that I am heavy set or just big bone. You want to bet I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat. Portly, chubby, plump and stout, everyone's a diplomat. Why not let it all hang out and go ahead and call me fat? So please, don't think you're being kind by pretending to be blind. Just take a look at my physique. There's only one word, fat. And I'm not really unhappy being fat. There are times when it's inconvenient. Such as when I'm trying to ladle myself into a theater seat. Or trying to get all of me through a turnstile at one pass. <laughs> or calling the lobby to tell them that the bed has broken. Again. I'm fat. It would be untruthful to deny it would also be impossible because my failing is my flag some men can sin and conceal it they're bandits but no one gets wise when I sin my seams will reveal it my crime is proclaimed by my size some folks are awful and lawful they're loaded with loot but who'd know it I try to sneak it a waffle, and five minutes later, I show it. <laughs> the fella who sells marijuana can walk down the street like a saint, and his sister may seem a Madonna, but the vice squad can prove that she ain't. <laughs> Since pounds are like crimes, they can nail me on well over 300 counts and try me for each pound and jail me. I hope I'm not fined by the ounce. I'm guilty of imperfect diet. My weight shows I'm pizza pie prone. I know it's no good to deny it. Now, who wants to cast the first stone? <laughs> or to be a bit more blunt, although my belt may not be svelte, I've never felt disgusted. The kind of pot that I have got will never get me busted. <laughs> To most people, the idea of being fat is tragic. There are times when it could be tragic if I allowed it to be, such as when one is at the beach and one hears a childish voice sing out, Mama, look, a man with titties. <laughs> 
A thing like that can crimp one's day if one doesn't filter these things through the gauze of mirth. Consider, we pray, that if the Lord had intended man to be thin, he would not have given us pizza. <laughs> that it is far more blessed to spread than to recede. <laughs> that man lives not by whole wheat bread alone, but also by the mayonnaise and salami on top of it. And to you, our fellow fatties, our bulbous brethren, we say, arise! <laughs> if you can. <laughs> This is the time of revolution, and we are revolting. We few, we, we happy, hippie few must stand shoulder, hip to hip, and relentlessly pursue the metric alpha lunch bunch and the Eileen feather freaks. The diet Pepsi degeneration and the rye crisp creeps and line them up against a wall and make them eat cake. <laughs> Using Twiggy as a fork. Yeah, Twiggy. That prime and pinched personification of the devaluation of the pound. And then we will turn on the makers of bar stools and bicycle seats and pay them back for years of discrimination for decades of turning the other cheek not so much for the sake of revenge as for the sake of the posteriori of posterity and all these above we do highly resolve to accomplish and every American home will have a Rubens woman over the fireplace, Sebastian Cabot shall be president, and Danish modern shall perish from the earth. <laughs> ballet. I've never done ballet. I gave it up when my tailor told me the only way he could think of rigging up a pair of tights would be to cut armholes in the whale skin. <laughs> On that day when I slimmed down to 300 pounds, oh, I'll do so many things. But until then, I must dream. Someday when I'm skinny and can tie my shoes with ease, <laughs> I'll do great things and visit great new places. I'll contemplate that strange new world that lies below my knees. I'll roller skate and ride a horse in races. I could be a jockey right now, but my horse is in need of a truss. And you can't get good odds if you're riding a cow. And how do you saddle a bus? I'll eat Danish pastry with no sense of guilt. My seams will stay sewn and my collars won't wilt. I'll hop aboard airplanes and not have to mention my need for an 18-inch seatbelt extension. Or I may work it out so my body gets thin while my head becomes terribly fat. I could certainly be a vice president then, and I hope he can't sue me for that. <laughs> I'll swim in the ocean. I can't now, you see, because I'm always attacked by a boatload of kooks yelling, Ahab was right, he's as white as can be, as they hurl their harpoons at my flukes. I'll pass groups of kids and delight in their playing and not have to pretend I can't hear what they're saying. I'll jump in a bathtub that's filled to the top and not have to fear that the water will slop. I'm too big for most bathtubs, you see. There's just enough room, if I'm lucky, for a half pint of water and me, but no room for soap or my ducky. I'll get me some sneakers. I'll go in for sports, skydiver, shortstop, and all-round first stringer. I'll terrorize the Coliseum's canvas mats and courts. I'll be a famous quarterback, like, what's his name, the swinger. I'll have a series on Channel One. Metrical brings you the flying bun. I'll... I'll win golden medals and trophies of bronze for skiing 
and driving a car at Le Mans. Once I went skiing on Thanksgiving Day down a slope in Vermont. It was snowing. I made it to Montana by the 17th of May. And if I hadn't hit that moose, I'd still be going. And racing cars is out of bounds for people who are stout. I'm too big to make the Maserati scene. And to fit me in a Fiat is impossible to do without a shoehorn and a case of Vaseline. Yeah, someday I'll be skinny and I'll have a lot of fun. I'll live on cyclamates and cottage cheese. But now I see the waiter has my baked Alaska done. Set it here and fetch another, if you please. <laughs> Recently, I went to the Scripps Clinic in La Jolla, where for one full week I was completely and relentlessly examined and released, having been told that I am healthy as an ox. While I was there, they put me on a 600-calorie-a-day diet, and that is very hard. Running all of this on 600 calories a day... <laughs> It's like running the Queen Elizabeth on two pints of polyunsaturated salad oil per day. But I did it, and I lost weight. When I was nervous and agitated, I went for walks on the beach in front of the clinic. La Jolla is quite near the San Andreas Fault. Perhaps the thought of me going into the DTs blew their minds. Once I turned a somersault quite near the San Andreas Fault. Later, as I nursed my knee, a telegram arrived for me. The message part said, Cool it, Victor. The signature read, Dr. Richter. <laughs> at, at any rate, I, I enjoyed the walks on the beach in front of the clinic. And I wasn't tempted to stop at any of the hot dog stands or the ice cream stands because I've got character. And the clinic's got a sniper on the roof. <laughs> this time it was easier. But how many times in the past have I gone into my doctor's office like a naughty child entering church? Bless me, doctor. I have sinned <laughs> since seeing you last week. The spirit had the will to win, but ah, oh, the flesh was weak. You warned me that I must deprive my appetites and somehow strive to conquer these compulsive drives to eat which now obsess me. You told me all the foods to ban. You gave me pills to aid the plan. I still outweigh my own sedan. <laughs> And so I must confess me. On Monday, I awoke at eight, determined to reduce my weight. Dry toast and tea is all I ate. Then Satan came to test me. The pills had made me feel so great, I felt I ought to celebrate. I made French toast and licked the plate. Bless me, Doctor. bless me. On Tuesday, as I lay in bed, I still had 60 pounds to shed, but... Thoughts of cheesecake filled my head and started to enslave me. The devil can't trick me, I said. I want the cheesecake, but instead I'll eat two loaves of diet bread. Save me, doctor, save me. On Wednesday, I went quite insane. At eight, I switched on Jack LaLanne. By nine, I was a knot of pain. Then Satan came to snare me. By ten, I couldn't stand the strain. I dialed a famous chicken chain. Send three with malts and two more planes. <laughs> spare me, Colonel, spare me. But Thursday brought the worst disgrace. On Thursday, I was very base. I looked the devil in the face. I should have known he'd trap me. I got into a kind of race. I won the race with easy grace. The race was in a pizza place. <laughs> slap me, someone slap me. And now it's Friday and I'm back. A saturated cul-de-sac. A hopeless munchomaniac. But nothing can suppress me. So put some fresh pills in my sack. I'm ready for the fiend's attack. 
And while I wait, I'll have a snack. Pass the drink, bless me. I have something here that doesn't really concern fat lovers, albeit we're the best. <laughs> At least the most. <laughs> I have grown so weak and weary of the silly modern theory that in order to be known as chic, one must not look well fed. According to the magazines, if one cannot wear tapered jeans, one might as well wear saddlebags and tennis shoes and oily rags or simply buy a comfy shroud, because socially you're dead. Now, just because some lazy gland has gotten somewhat out of hand and caused me to expand into the shape in which you find me. I see no cause to hide my face. I've got my share of manly grace. Just got wadded in one place. And some got stuck behind me. To me, it's inconceivable that one could find believable the thought that one must have a shape exactly like his chum. I simply won't apologize for being of a grander size. When everyone's a seedless grape, it's great to be a plum. <laughs> if the girls refuse to dig me just because I'm not a pygmy, then I try to make them see my view that beauty comes in barrels, too. <laughs> and precious gemstones grow in clumps. And treasures can be found in dumps and silver hides in heaps. To heck with all your fashion trends. I'd rather be myself, my friends. I love to be a limousine when all the rest are jeeps. <laughs> I think that I shall never see my feet. <laughs> I think it only proper to end this portion of our discussion with a prayer. <laughs> Lord, my soul is ripped with riot, incited by my wicked diet. We are what we eat, said a wise old man. And Lord, if that's true, I'm a garbage can. <laughs> I want to rise on Judgment Day, that's plain. But at my present weight, I'll need a crane. So grant me strength that I may not fall into the clutches of cholesterol. May my flesh with carrot curls be sated, that my soul may be polyunsaturated. And show me the light that I may bear witness to the President's Council on Physical Fitness. At only your margarine, I'll never mutter, for the road to hell is spread with butter. And cream is cursed, and cake is awful, and Satan is hiding in every waffle. Mephistopheles lurks in provolone, the devil is in each slice of bologna, Beelzebub is a chocolate drop, and Lucifer is a lollipop. Give me this day my daily slice. But cut it thin and toast it twice. I beg upon my dimpled knees, deliver me from jujubes. And when my days of trial are done and my war with malted milks is won, let me stand with the saints in heaven in a shining robe, size 37. I can do it, Lord, if you'll show to me the virtues of lettuce and celery, if you'll teach me the evil of mayonnaise, the sinfulness of hollandaise and pasta a la milanaise and potatoes a la leonaise and crisp fried chicken from the south. Lord, if you love me, shut my mouth. <laughs> some skinny poems for fat lovers. <laughs> I see her now beside the fountain. I am Muhammad and here come the mountain. <laughs> we met beside the hangar and we flew away to heaven. She's my little Hindenburg and I'm a 747. <laughs> You 
can laugh. Go ahead. Some of the things you skinny people call your low... Pussycat. Bunny rabbit. <laughs> Some men call the girl they love their chickadee or turtle dove and other birdie names I find revolting. The things that names like these suggest dine on bugs, live in nests, and scratch for worms when they're not busy molting. And pussycats and bunny rabbits have distressing social habits. <laughs> Lambs and ducks are sweet, but spoil the lawn. But I'm not one to criticize. Lovers see through filtered eyes if they dig pink eyes, fangs, and fleas right on. <laughs> My sweetheart's not at all like all the rest. She's much more like the things I like the best. Brisket of beauty, my pretty pink parfait, my tenderloin of tenderness, my passionate pate. Her mouth is like a cherry, small and sweet. Her cheeks are apples, firm and fresh and red. In her complexion, cream and peaches meet. My Tootsie has a tutti fruit. My canapé, café au lait and kraut. My barbecue and fondue, too. My hash, the kind that's legal. She's the leavening of loveliness that makes my spirits rise. She's basic and wholesome as stew. When I look in her eyes, I see blueberry pies. When I say pizza, poopsie, I mean you. She's as peaceful as a pickle and as rich as pumpernickel and as happy as salami. She's my hot pastrami. Me, mommy, heaven sent me as her lover. This is just so darn much of her. She's my manna a la mode, sent from above. Together we're an automat of love. <laughs> America, hear my words and tremble. Lard lib is at hand. <laughs> Paradise was very nice for Adam and his madam until they filched the fruit and took the fall. We lost our place and fell from grace, and you can bet we can't forget that eating is the oldest sin of all. <laughs> Since man first fell, they've made life hell for folks who tend to make things bend, and I, for one or two, can take no more. I sound the call for fat folk all to follow me to liberty. I hold the lamp beside the kitchen door. Too long have we been forced to be the slapsticks of society. Too long have we drunk tab while they drink wine. <laughs> our cause may seem a hopeless dream, but faith and pride are on our side. Our acids may be fatty, but we're fine. <laughs> the time is now, and we must vow to take our place within our race and sound our horns and let our banners flutter. Being thin is where it's been, but being fat is where it's at. <laughs> Forward, fellow fatties, pass the butter. <laughs> well. I enjoy traveling in Europe. In the past three years, I have made three films in Italy, land of my fathers and godfathers. My father's parents were born in Florence, which is the most gracious and noble of ladies. And then there's Bella Napoli stretching forth her arms to meet all weary travelers. My first night in Naples, I was taken to a recital by a German soprano. She sang beautifully, but somewhere between her first selection and Thursday, she, for some perverse reason, elected to include three arias from Madame Butterfly in German, out loud. She sang them well, but hearing Madame Butterfly sung well in German is not unlike seeing Swan Lake danced well by the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> ah, yes, and then there's beautiful Venezia and Turino and the seductive Val d'Osta. All of Italy, most of Italy, is charming and seductive. Certainly all Italians are. 
With the exception of Rome and Romans, I do not like Rome. Aside from the art, it is Bakersfield with tomato sauce. <laughs> The traffic is unbelievably bad, especially in Vatican City, where the carabinieri wait behind pillars in hopes of finding a Presbyterian making an illegal left turn. <laughs> I ran a red light and got caught by the Vatican carabinieri. I paid my fine right in the spot. Ten dollars and one Hail Mary. <laughs> of course, the laws of ancient Rome were even more, even more hard. I actually want to say the laws of ancient Rome were even harsher. Those who broke the laws of Rome were stoned upon this spot. A lot of Romans still get stoned, but few of them get caught. <laughs> if any of you, by the way, are planning to spend any time in Roman hotels, I must warn you never to undress, even when bathing. Unless you are as militantly immodest as the chambermaids are. Chambermaids who work in Rome are very hard to shock. They wait until you're naked, then they enter, then they knock. <laughs> I'll never forget the rapture I experienced when I left Rome for the first time. <laughs> After saying a prayer for the repose of the soul of Nero, who had the good sense to burn it down a long time ago, I went downtown, removed a coin from the Trevi Fountain, and penned these thoughts on the bicep of a floating wino. <laughs> Rome eternal, high and palmy, home of Caesar and salami, sun-washed city, peaceful, holy, full of art, and ravioli <laughs> buy a treasure rich and strange count your blessings count your chain <laughs> marble fountains filled with coins by hopeful spinsters from Des Moines <laughs> see the lovers a bankrupt duke and a bulging widow from Dubuque she loves his blue eyes and white hair he loves her blue white solitaire <laughs> A starving painter, a lonely matron. She needs a paint job and he needs a patron. Piazza Navona, Piazza di Spagna, Viva Bernini, Viva Lasagna. A marble Venus veiled in dust with a chopped off chin and a busted bust. Mighty Mars, the god of battle. His nose is a paperweight now in Seattle. <laughs> Power fades and glory tumbles. That shit away to pizza crumbles. <laughs> in 1938, I was born. Properly, sufficiently, and despite a few hysterical shepherds, quietly. <laughs> Nine months after my life began. March 3rd. I am. As of now, I am. I'm not very much. <laughs> but even the smallest crumb of bread is still bread. Whatever bread is. Well, I may not be as big as a crumb, but I'm just as good as a crumb, and I'm as much me as a crumb as a crumb, so there, I am. Now, what am I? I'm sleepy. <laughs> March 10th. I'm a boy. I mean, I'm going to be. It's all settled in advance because I got 22 pair of ordinary chromosomes plus one X chromosome and, and a Y chromosome, and I like bugs. <laughs> Whatever bugs are. A lot of other things have already been decided in advance, too. 
I'll have myopic, light blue eyes like my mother, and I'll be left-handed like my father, and six feet four inches tall with big bones and big feet like my mother's father, and, and I'll love music like my Uncle Jeff, and I'll be able to play the piano as well as anyone who's six four, big-footed, left-handed, and myopic, and I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> March 17th. You know, it's funny. I know so much about me already, and I don't even know what my mother looks like. <laughs> and she doesn't even know I'm living here under her heart. But she's warm, I know, and soft, and kind to give cradle to an imperfect stranger and share with him her blood. March 24th. My heart started beating all by itself and it scared the heck out of me. <laughs> Gotta get used to it. It's gonna go on for a long time. April 14th. Bulletin flash. Ah, uh, is that rabbit sick? <laughs> Whatever a rabbit is, whatever sick is. But now my mother and father know they're probably working on names. David. David. May 5th. Yeah, it's very nice here. Warm always and safe. On the other hand, I've got another hand now too. It, there's nothing really to do. When I was little, it was enough just to be, just to be. All I had was awareness, which is great, but a foot's fun too. What's the good of having a perfectly good mouth without a puppy's ear to put in it, or ten whole fingers without an uncle's eye to stick them in? With all due respect, Mom, I want out! <laughs> or is it in? We can't go on like this forever. I'm going to be 6'4", remember? <laughs> With light blue eyes, whatever blue is, whatever light is. I'm healthy and willing and ready to stand on my rights. And if that's not enough, I'm able to kick. May 19th. Today my mother killed me. I don't know quite what to call this. It's not about birth. It's not about death either. As heaven's portals opened wide, a brand new saint came marching in. For one who recently had died, he wore a most aggressive grin. They handed him a golden horn, just polished by a cherub's wing, a gift from friends long since reborn, Parker and Handy and Bix and King. He mopped his forehead with a cloud, then blew a riff so rich and rare that Gabriel arose and bowed and moved to second chair. He strode straight into paradise as lofts of angels flowered in song. Hello, Satchmo, it's so nice to have you back where you belong.